Sid, your colleague, firmly passed this one over to you in terms of the rumours of Walmart uh, looking at a South African retailer and the name ShopRite has been bandied about. What is your view? First of all, <coughs> that rumour has been around a very long time. It's nothing new. I recollect that rumour being around well over a year ago. So it's been around a long time. And it's true that Walmart were in South Africa about a year ago. It's also true that they did come around for tea and biscuits, if they got biscuits, and they visited all the major retailers. And they also visited, according to one of the retailers, a, a lot of manufacturers as well. But it's not the first time they've been to this country. And on a previous occasion, not this one apparently, but on a previous occasion, the current chairman of the board of the company, one of the, um, I think, S. Robson Walton, was included in one of those trips. So, I mean, th they, clearly, they clearly do place Africa as um, high on the list of priorities, but I think there were comments in one of the newspapers this morning that, um, in fact, it came from ShopRite, you know, that, that China with 1.3 or whatever it is, billion people, would probably be a far more exciting place than the African continent as a whole. But, you know, not only in numbers, but also in purchasing power. Um, one must also take that into account. Um, ShopRite is probably the best um, placed business because it is a single business. It conducts a single kind of business throughout Africa, and that's the retailing of groceries. The other one, uh, obviously, that you know gets bandied around is MassMart, but MassMart has four separate businesses. And I think if a Walmart was going to come to South Africa and was going to buy somebody in it, there's no guarantee that their entry into South Africa would be through an acquisition. But let's assume they, they buy something. I would say they would be more interested in buying a single business unit, that is the retailing of groceries, which is not totally ideal, but certainly is a single business, rather than a business which has four separate components, and some of those components are alien to what Walmart does internationally in any event. As you say, this rumor has been around for almost a year. Why is it coming to the surface again? Is it that journalists are looking for something to write, to talk about, given the fact that we're not in earnings season on the South African front? Have we just uh, hitched our uh, thoughts to this one now? Unfortunately, I think there's quite a bit of um, uh, quite a little uh, validity in that uh, in that proposition. Um, this story, from what I read in one of the newspapers today, emanates from one of the big broking houses in New York. So um, that's where this one comes from. And of course, we are in a in a quiet season. But I must just warn that the. Uh, some of the retailers start reporting next week, as early as next week. And then, of course, we have a lot of other companies um, reporting, certainly in the second and third week of May. So if this is a quiet season, it's about to come to an end. So maybe the rumors will stop. Um, Could you know there be I mean? further upside to <coughs> the retail stocks, given this rumor recirculating, if we use that term? Because we know how hard retailers have run to this point. And the big question out in the market right now is, can they go any higher? No, because I think, um, and it's, uh, it's certainly my view, that virtually all the retailers are pretty much either fully priced or, in some cases, overpriced. So for them to go any higher, I think, is, um, is a difficult call. Um, for the prices to go higher, I think you're going to need something a little bit more concrete than just another rumour. Narina, taking the broader market into account, <coughs> we had the likes of Richemont and Steinhoff at the top of the, the top 40 today, although not much to, to write home about on the local market, given the fact that we underperformed the positive momentum on the international front. What do you think this week is going to be about? Hmm. I think we very much, it's interesting that Richmond and, and Steiner are the two that are the top of the league tables because those are very much Euro plays and I think that's what this week is going to be about. It's going to be about currencies. Um, we saw today um, some some details finally on the Greek bailout, um, the IMF and, and the um, European Union finally coming with firm plans for the Greek bailout. That was um, just in the aftermath of Fitch of course downgrading um, their uh, debt to, to just one notch above junk status so true to form we <laughs> <laughs> we Rosie have agencies are ahead of the game. Absolutely, they? they're very much ahead of the curve. So yes, we finally had the details of that bailout plan coming to the fore. 30 billion eu um, euros coming from the, the um, European Union and another 10 to 15 billion euros in the sidelines from the IMF that's uh, um, ready to be used. Pricing in coming at around 5% on that, which is slightly richer than what was um, uh, hoped for, I think, or sort of budgeted for. And that might be part of the reason why maybe there's a, um, not quite the 
euphoria, I think, that was initially priced into the market first thing this morning. But be that as it may, that certainly led to strength in the euro and, and further weakness into, into the US dollar. Um, certainly the dollar index um, reached a, um, quite a multi-month low um, uh, today and, and on Friday also. And I think that's really the story that it's all about. But it's not only about the euro. A very strong currency player for us is the Asian currencies, and in particular the renminbi. And I think the, the issue for me here is going to see how the Chinese are going to play this out. We saw on Friday that they came out with their biggest trade deficit in, um, since 2004, mainly on the back of massive oil imports that they had. Um, and, and it's going to be interesting to see how the Reserve Bank in, in China actually plays this one. Um, they've again made noises about trying to rein in the spending um, or the lending towards uh, property developers. So they continue to try to, to cool that economy down. And the currency um, strengthening of the, of the Asian currencies is, is a form of monetary um, tightening that they can use. So for me, the eye should be on the, on the currencies this week. And I think that's really where the news flow will come from until we hit our own earnings season over the next couple of weeks. Mm.